So let's make the discussion about divide and conquer more concrete by examining a specific algorithm, merge sort. It's an algorithm that we also saw in the first uh, lesson and uh, I'm sure you have seen it before. So the basic idea of merge sort is that we are given an array of n elements and they can be anything as long as we can somehow compare two elements and um, know which one is lower or which one is first. So the basic idea of merge sort is that we split the array into two equal parts. Of course that uh, step can be done in a constant amount of time. And then recursively we call again the merge sort algorithm in each of these two um, subarrays. So if it takes t of n to run merge sort on an array of size n, the time it takes to run merge sort on these two arrays of size n over 2 will be twice t um, n over 2. Now, when the recursive um, call for these two subarrays returns, these two arrays will be ordered, right? So instead of A, L, G, O, R, we have A, G, L, O, R, and so on. Then we have to do that extra work uh, of combining the two uh, solutions, the solution of this subproblem and the solution of this subproblem. As we discussed back in lesson one, if you have two arrays that are already ordered and you want to combine them into an ordered array, a sorted array, you can do this in linear time by maintaining a pointer to the first element of each array, making a comparison between only these two elements. Whichever element comes first, you copy it into the output, you move it into the output, and then of course you um, delete it from here, you move your pointer to the next element and you repeat the same process until one of the two arrays is empty. At that point you move all the remaining elements to the final output array. So as we discussed before, you can do this operation in linear time. That's why we say here that merging these two arrays can be done in linear time. So what I just described in words, it is shown here in terms of code. This is the merge sort uh, function. It's a recursive function. It's given an array of n numbers and the output of course will be a sorted array of those numbers. And if the array uh, has a size of one, then we just return that element without doing anything. If uh, the size of the array, however, is larger than one, then we call merge sort recursively once in the first half of the array. Notice here that I'm using um, the floor operation n over 2 so that we can cover both the case that n is even and that n is odd. And also we call merge sort on the rest of the array and the merge operation that you see here is this function down here which essentially combines the two um, sorted arrays. Um, if you look at this, this is also a recursive function that works as we discussed before by comparing in every iteration just the first element of um, the two arrays. Now that we remembered the merge sort algorithm, let's write down the recursive equation that we can use to argue for the running time of the algorithm. So if t of n again is the time it takes to run merge sort on an input of size n, we can write that t of, first of all, our base case, when we only have one element, that is basically zero, right? It takes zero time to order an array of a single element. If, however, uh, n is greater or equal than two, then the running time of merge sort can be written as the running time to run merge sort on an array of size n over 2 floor, in case that n is uh, odd, right, uh, this floor operation would be important, plus the running time on, uh, to run merge sort on, on the rest of the array, 
So we will write here C link. This covers the case that n is odd. Of course, if n is even, then this and this would be equal. Plus the time it takes to merge the two sorted arrays. And as we discussed, this can be done in linear time. So what I'm going to write here is that that amount of time can be C, where C is a constant, a positive constant times N, right? So C is a positive constant. Now, again, because we are interested in uh, the worst case, it would be more accurate if I say that this uh, running time is lower or equal than that. Um, but for the most part, we will be replacing this inequality with just an equality and focus on the worst case. Now, how would you simplify this recursive equation uh, if uh, you knew that n is even? So very often from now on, we will be simplifying these recursive equations by assuming that n is even and also by using equality rather than inequality with the understanding that this would be the worst case scenario for the um, running time of the algorithm. So let's see now our first method for solving recursions. I wrote here again the recursion for merge sort in its simpler form where we assume that n is even and we work with equalities. So the method is called unfolding the recursion tree you uh, construct a tree in which you show at its uh, level of the recursion how many problems you have to solve and how big the problems are. So in the first level we have only one problem of size n. In the second level we have uh, two problems of size n over 2. In the third level we have four problems of size n over 4. And this will keep going until we reach the level log base 2n, in which we, ha we will have problems of size 2. How many such problems? We will have a total of n over 2 such problems. Now, why do I stop at uh, this level in which we have to order two numbers? Because if you go uh, down one more level and you have only one number, in that case you don't have to do any work. The running time is zero. So the level at which we have um, the least amount of non-zero work is the level log base 2 of n in which we have two numbers to sort. Now, let's see how much actual work we need to do in each level. In level 1, we just need to do, as you can see from the recursion, um, c times n, right, work, or c times n operations, because we need to combine these two solutions to form a solution of size n. That's the merging part of the algorithm I showed you earlier. At level 2, we have two problems to solve, each of them of size n over 2. Uh, the amount of work we need to do at that level is c times n over 2. This, of course, is also equal to c times n. In the next level, we have 4 times c n over 4, which is also c times n. And at the bottom layer, we have n over 2 problems, each of them of size 2, so the running time will also be c times n. So if we add together all the work that our algorithm has to do in all of these layers, given that we have this many layers and in each layer we have to do c times n work, the total work, which is what we denote by t of n, will be c times n times log base 2 of n, which is, as you know by now, big O n log n. So this method, which we applied here in the recursion of the merge sort algorithm, can be applied in any divide and conquer problem. Uh, typically what happens is after you unfold the recursion tree by two or three levels, 
you can see a pattern that uh, is forming and that allows you to guess really um, how much work you need to do in each level of the recursion tree. Eventually you just have to add all of the work that you do um, across the whole uh, recursion tree. So the previous method is useful and very commonly applied but in some sense it is a bit um, informal because uh, first we assume that n is even and we work with equalities rather than inequalities um, and we are guessing what the solution is really by looking at the first two, three, four levels of the recursion tree. If we want to be more um, uh, formal, after we guess what the solution is, we should also try to prove it. And the right um, method of proof here is mathematical induction. Remember that induction is used when we want to show that the property is true for all positive integers, which is exactly what we are trying to show here. So let's uh, apply this approach in the case of merge sort. Um, as you see here, I'm not uh, assuming that n is even anymore. So we want to show that the running time is upper bounded by this expression for all n that is uh, positive. So in any inductive proof, first you need to consider your um, base case, which is the smallest value of n for which this is true. In our case, this is when n is equal to 1. Remember that when n is equal to 1, our recursion is saying that we can uh, do the sorting operation in zero time. And indeed, if we plug into this formula the value of 1, we're getting that um, we have c times 1 times uh, the log base 2 of 1, which is of course uh, 0. So this is true. Then we have our inductive assumption, right? So we are assuming this uh, formula ti smaller or equal than c times i times log base 2 of i we're assuming that this is true for all values of i from 1 to all the way to some particular value n minus 1. And we're trying to show the inductive step. We're trying to show that under this assumption, which includes the base case, the inequality that we want to show is also true for the next value of i, which is n. So based on the recursion, t of n is lower or equal than 2 times t of n over 2 plus c times n. This t uh, of n over 2, however, this based on our inductive assumption is less or equal than 2 times c times n over 2 times the log base 2 of n over 2, right? So what I wrote here is um, this term um, based on our inductive assumption plus uh, c times n. Now we can simplify this a little bit here. The two, um, the twos cancel. So we have c times n log base 2 of n over 2 is log base 2 of n minus uh, log base 2 of 2 plus c times n. Now log base 2 of 2 of course is equal to 1. So we end up with uh, as you can see c times n times um, log base 2 of n which is exactly what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that t of n is lower or equal than c times n times log base 2 of n. This concludes the inductive uh, proof because we showed that this inequality is true for the base case of n equals to 1. And under the assumption that this inequality is true for all values of i up to n minus 1, we were able to show that it will also be true for the next value of i, which is n.